Hi, my friends. I'm super excited to share the process to stitch our miniature pincher this month. But before we get started, I wanted to go over a few things, show you the samples I've made and share the various new techniques I've been experimenting with on this little guy. So this is the first sample that I made for us. And you'll notice that the legs are quite a bit slimmer than Felix and my other animals. I used only one folded pipe cleaner inside rather than two as we usually do. I also made all of the black coloration on this sample with a black Prismacolor pen. I used this brush tip version with lots of ink to soak into the surface of the felt. The great thing about the Prismacolor pens versus Sharpies, for example, is that they're permanent and water resistant and they don't bleed as Sharpies can. As you know, I like to set the surface of the felt at various points in the process with hairspray. With a Sharpie, to avoid bleeding on the raw felt, you have to seal the surface of the, um, excuse me, you have to seal the surface with hairspray and let it dry before making any markings. Prismacolor and Micron pens won't bleed on the raw felt or with use of hairspray in any layering combination. So these are my go-to pens. That said, make sure to let the ink and hairspray dry between coats and be careful not to get the pen on your fingers because it can quickly transfer to unmarked felt areas when it's being handled. For the tail, I made two lengths. I'm not sure which I like better, so I gave them both to you in the pattern um, to use as you like. I also want to mention that I tried several ideas to get the black coloration. On this sample, the black is done entirely with a Prismacolor pen. But as I was doing it, I thought it was maybe a bit wasteful of the ink. So on the following sample, I made the body and tail in black felt, and I used the pen on the legs and arms. I liked that, um, but again, perhaps we needed a felt option for the legs and arms too. So I made a pattern piece that you can stitch on to the legs and arms to add the black that way. Another little detail to note is that on the first sample, I forgot that the inner legs and arms don't have any black, so I adjusted that on my next sample. I also added in a peat colored patch on the chest as well. Uh, for those who are new to our group, let's begin with the legs, and then we'll move on to the chest patch and body assembly, then the tail, and then on to the head, ears, and the face. So let's take a look at the legs and arms pieces. If you plan to mark them with pen, you can cut the arms and legs in whichever earthy tone you've chosen for the body. If you want to add the black with felt rather than pen, you can whip stitch this piece on using the pattern as a reference for placement. For those new to making my animals, the legs piece and the arms piece are the same size. One will create both legs and the other will make both arms. To prepare them for the pipe cleaner that will fill them, whip stitch around the curve of one end and up the side, leaving the opposite end open for inserting the pipe cleaner. In your pattern on page three, you'll see a template for folding the pipe cleaner. You can cut the template out of the chipboard from the back of a notebook, or maybe from the chipboard I've included in one of your soft packed felt orders. So here's how to use the template. I recently adjusted the way I've been folding my pipe cleaners. I'm now leaving a little gap in the center. Let me show you. Begin by butting up one cut end at the top line. Fold over the top of the template with a crisp fold and go around the back. Then make another crisp fold as you fold to the front and cut the pipe cleaner at the bottom line. Now we can remove it from the template and bind the center. Take a length of thread and leave a long tail like this. You can wrap back over the tail, binding the first cut, and then the gap, and then over the second cut end, then tie off with a square knot. You can make a square knot by tying right over left and then left over right to form a strong locking knot. Now trim the threads and let's stuff the legs with pipe cleaner. To stuff the legs, you want to support the opening with one hand and make short pushes close to the opening with the other hand. Try to avoid pushing from the end of the pipe cleaner because it will tend to buckle. When your pipe cleaners are in, you can whip stitch the openings closed. If you want to add on the chest piece, you can do that now before assembling the body. Use an edge to surface whip stitch to attach the chest piece. 
To make an edge to surface whip stitch, each stitch will be made in two passes. Come up from the back and catch the edge of the chest piece. Then pass from front to back, skimming the edge of the felt as you go. Continue all the way around and knot off on the back side of the body. Now we're ready to assemble the body and the legs and add the spine to form the poseable skeleton of our pup. Do you remember that gap in the folded pipe cleaners? Feel for that in the legs piece to find its center point. Then fold a pipe cleaner in half and twist it around the center point to create the lower portion of the spine. Next, wrap the body piece around the skeleton, folding it at the crotch. The arms piece goes in next, but we need to get its height just right before twisting it into the spine. The top edge of the arms piece should line up with the corner of the shoulder on the body piece. Now, when you have the arms piece at their proper height, go ahead and twist it into the pipe cleaner spine and keep the twisting below the neckline. Fold up the chest and pin the body at the shoulders. Next up, we'll stitch the body sides. I'll be using thread that matches the legs, even though I'm stitching the black felt on the body. Using this color thread will make stitching easier to see on the black felt. When I've finished, I'll use my black pens to shade in the thread. To whip stitch the side seams, use a single strand of floss. In my patterns, I suggest that you begin at the hip, stitch around the leg, and then up to the armpit. This works just fine, but lately I've switched directions, and I think I might like it better. By pinning the shoulder first, as we just did, you know exactly where to begin under the arm. This takes some of the guesswork out of how far up you stitch when going in the opposite direction. Now, when you come to the hip, your stitch will change slightly. Let's zoom in to look more closely. As you can see, I'm going at a bit of an angle here and catching the leg felt and the black edge together in one pass. This is another version of the edge to surface whip stitch that we made when we stitched the chest on. What's different here is that we can't pass front to back and back to front as we did on the chest. Because this is now a 3D object, we have to do it all from one side. So hold on just a minute. I'm gonna stop for a second and then replay the last stitch for you. So there's this funny point as you come around the inner leg where things get a bit awkward. Go ahead and bend the other leg out of your way to help. Here's the trick. This is a two-pass jobby, but different. On the first part of the stitch, grab only the leg felt, then switch directions and grab the edge of the black body felt. This cool little trick can get you out of a lot of sticky situations. I often do two of these stitches to get around each leg. Coming around the back of the leg, the stitches go back to normal again. When you reach the hip, just knot off and hide your knot. Now pause the video and stitch the opposite side, and then we'll be ready to stuff the lower body. Use your skewer or stuffing fork to fill the lower body. To have the best control of the stuffing process, use small pinches rather than large bunches to fill. After stuffing the lower body, whip stitch from the neck down to the shoulder, but wait to stitch around the arms. Once you've stuffed the upper body, the chest will puff out a bit. By waiting to stitch around the arms, you'll keep their seams from pulling in an awkward way. Don't go too crazy with the upper body stuffing. It should be evenly stuffed, but not busting at the seams. If things get too bulky in the chest, that can interfere with the jackets fitting nicely. When you finish up with the stuffing, trim the pipe cleaners and fold the cut ends down. Later, these two pipe cleaners will be inserted into the head to make a bendable neck. Okay, so now we just stitch around the arms as we did with the legs, and then we can move on to the tail. When you make your way all the way around the arm, you can just knot your thread and hide your knot. 
Now onto the tail. Here's a finished one that I made up. As you can see, I've layered the two pieces and whip stitched around the S curve, leaving the flat end open. To see better, I've done my stitching with the leg colored thread again. I'll shade in that seam line with my permanent black pen later on. To fill the tail, I have a folded length of extra plush cotton pipe cleaner with the fluff trimmed back to the wire at its center. The length you'll need will depend on which tail you choose, longer or shorter. When folded, you'll need the pipe cleaner to be about, about one and a half inches longer than the tail itself. As you slip the pipe cleaner into the tail, bend it to match the S curve. Then clip off one of the two exposed ends. To make the pipe cleaner slip easily into the body, trim off the cotton fluff and fold the sharp end of the pipe cleaner. Now add a bit of stuffing to fill the open end. You can use the sharp or the blunt end of your skewer or a stuffing fork here to sneak the fiber in. On the body pattern piece, you'll find an X that marks the tail placement. Refer to that before making the tail hole. Now use the sharp end of your skewer to make the hole and slip the skewer up into the body stuffing to make a channel. Insert the tail's exposed pipe cleaner wire up into that channel, and then we can stitch around it to attach it to the body. For the best visibility while attaching the black tail to the black body, I'll use a white thread to demonstrate. The stitch I'll be using is called a blind stitch or a ladder stitch. This stitch is excellent for both tails and heads because it disappears as you tighten it. For strength with this stitch, I usually use two strands, but today I thought I would try waxing a single strand to see if the strength the wax adds will do the trick. Once waxed, it can't be shaded in with my pens, but that won't matter here because of the disappearing nature of this stitch. Let's take a good look at an illustration and I'll talk you through the process. This illustration shows the stitch clearly, but on a wider curve than we'll be using for the tail. Here we go. First, you insert the needle through the body just beneath the tail and parallel to the tail hole. Then switch to the tail side and take another parallel stitch. Stitch back and forth from tail to body to tail again. At the halfway point, draw in the thread until it disappears. Then continue stitching until you've made your way all the way around to the starting point. Continue a second time around for extra strength. Knot the thread with an ending knot and hide the knot. So that was it for the body construction. Now let's move on to the head. On top here, I have the left and right head pieces facing each other nose to nose. As you assemble the head, it's helpful to set them up this way. I've made two lefts and two rights so many times that I always lay them out like this before I start stitching my darts. Start by pinching and pinning the darts like this. Use a single strand of matching thread to whip stitch each dart. Begin just ahead of the dart, inserting the needle through only the surface of the felt on the first stitch. This will secure the knot in the work and make a smooth pucker-free transition at the dart's point. Now go ahead and whip stitch up the edge, making two stitches to secure the end of the seam. On the dart seams, I like to move my ending knots away from the edge so I don't catch them in the center seam later on. You can do this by slipping the needle through the felt surface and then making your ending knot a short distance away. 
When you have the left and right head darts stitched, baste the two side head pieces together with the dart stitching facing out. Then whip stitch the front of the head from the neck up around the nose to just past the dart at the top of the head. Now we're ready to turn the head. Doing this before we stitch the entire head seam makes it easier to turn without stretching the felt. You'll need some nimble fingers, the blunt end of your skewer, or a small pair of needle nose pliers for this. What you want to do is push the nose in towards the back of the head until you can grab it there. Then carefully fold the sides of the head back to turn it right side out. Now use the blunt end of your skewer to push out and smooth the seams from the inside. At this point, I like to sneak some fiber into the nose before closing the back of the head. This little bit of stuffing helps keep the neck open later when I'm ready to finish stuffing it. To whip stitch the back of the head, use a single strand of matching thread. To hide the starting knot, insert the needle into the felt between the layers. Then whip stitch down the back of the head, leaving the neck hole open. As you stitch, you may want to use a pin to keep the seam from shifting or stretching. You can move it forward from time to time to keep it out of the way of your stitching. When you complete the seam, as usual, make an ending knot. You don't need to hide the knot here because it will get tucked up into the head to body seam a little bit later on. So now we're ready to finish stuffing the head. But before we do, let's look at a finished head sample in proportion to the stuffing that will fill it. I weighed the finished head on an accurate gram scale and weighed out the stuffing of the two side head pieces to get this quantity. The amount of stuffing you can fit into the heads can be a bit hard to believe. For head stuffing, like the body, you want to use small pinches one at a time. Using your bamboo skewer or stuffing fork, push in the stuffing piece by piece. As you work, turn the head to fill it symmetrically. If the head becomes lopsided, shift where you're pushing the stuffing to balance it. As the center of the head begins to fill, it will become more challenging to push the fiber into the middle. When you feel that shift, start slipping the wool fiber around the edges between the center core of fiber and the head casing itself. As the head fills, becoming firmer and firmer, use my scissor trick to refine the head's shape. By snipping your scissors up into the stuffing, you can create pathways to fill wherever you need more volume. You can get right into the nose or expand the crown of the head. Play around with the technique and make a few heads if you have time. The animal's heads have so much personality and refining their shape can make them even more charming. Well, this head looks pretty good to me. It has a smooth rounded shape and it's nice and firm to the touch. Next up is a good spritz of hairspray. I like to do this on the porch. As you spray, rotate the head to completely cover the surface with mist. I can see it's starting to beat up and the felt is darkening from the moisture. That looks great for our first round. So now I'm smoothing the beads of mist into the surface. I'm not sure this is necessary. I've experimented with allowing it to dry on its own too, and the ironing step flattened everything out nicely. So I think this is just impatience in action. So one thing I forgot was to fluff the fibers at the seams. I do this because it works like a comb over to disguise any visible stitching. I usually do it before the hairspray, but little missteps like this are just opportunities to learn. Here's how it works. 
I like a large pin for the job, but any needle will work too. Just scratch over the seam to lift the fibers. Do this all along the seam line and darts. My surface here is still a bit sticky from the hairspray, but it's working fine all the same. After it dries fully and I iron the seams, the hairspray will flatten the fluff and the seams will virtually disappear. Let's take a look. Heat your iron to its high setting and sit it upright on your work surface. Hold the head and press it into the iron surface, rotating it all around to flatten and smooth the fibers. I think it goes without saying to be careful of your fingers here. I have full confidence that everyone will be fine because in all my freeform ironing, I have yet to slip up. But do please be careful of your fingers. You'll want them in good working order for more fun projects. Now, as far as hairspray and ironing go, I often do two rounds to prep the surface for crisp markings with my pens. You might want to test this on some scrap felt first to see if you like one or two layers better. It's good to get a feel for this before you dive into marking a nearly finished animal. Okay, so let's just pause a moment and talk a few things through. On the first sample here, I completed all the elements on the head before stitching it onto the body. So just know that you can do that too. Also, I temporarily attached the eyes to shade in the black area with them in place. Having the eyes in place also allowed me to make the eyebrow outline more easily in relation to the eye placement. When I was all set with the black coloring and had left blank areas for the eyebrows, I detached the eyes, colored beneath them with black, and then reattached them. On this sample, which I'll show you the process for in just a minute, I tried something different. I first attached the head to the body, then made a rough coloring of the black, and then I attached the eyes and applied the eyebrows after the fact. So let's take a look at that process. Before attaching the head, I sometimes like to bind the pipe cleaners so they slide into the head more easily. This process is the same as the technique we used to bind the pipe cleaners inside the legs and arms pieces earlier. To make a pathway for the pipe cleaners, snip up into the head as we did when we were stuffing it. Then insert the pipe cleaners into the cut pathway. Twist and push the head onto the pipe cleaner stem until you're happy with the length of the neck. I usually cover the neck about one quarter inch, but you only need to do this by eye. To attach the head, I'm using two strands of thread. I'm demonstrating with white again for visibility, but you can use black or your body color here. Use a blind stitch as we did on the tail and refer back to that illustration if you need to. I suggest going twice around here again for strength. For the ears, I didn't want them to get too stiff before sewing them onto the head. So I used the Prismacolor brush tip pen directly on the untreated felt surface. As you shade them in, leave a slim border around all their edges. Later on, when they're attached, we can color in the ear to head transition. On your pattern, the side head pieces have light gray shading, indicating roughly where to mark with your black pen. Keep those pattern pieces handy as you work to guide you. I'm starting here with a line on the seam going up from the nose, then roughly outlining the cheeks. If you're using the method from my first sample, Skip ahead to watch the eye attachment process now. Also on that method, you'll be using the underlying felt color as the eyebrows. After attaching the eyes, outline the brows so you can color around them as you shade in the black. As I'm working here, I'm switching back and forth from side to side to check that my markings look similar. It's better to go wide with your markings at first so you can gradually bring in the cheek shading as you refine its shape. So I've sped things up a bit here and I'm just gonna let the footage run through. 
Since this is a new technique for us, I want you to see the process from start to finish. So now I have the entire surface covered with a nice layer of ink, but I can see hints of the felt color coming through still. That's not a problem, but to make the shading more uniform, you can turn the brush tip on its side and press down. As you do, the tip will release more ink. Roll the tip on its side like this to darken any areas that need more color. So now it's eye time. Use the pattern as a reference for the eye placement, or just use the video itself. You can still refine the black cheek line, so use that as a guide also, but don't be controlled by it. If the eyes feel like they should be in front of the cheek line, mark them in their happy place with a deep skewer hole and adjust the cheek line as necessary. And remember, each animal has its own unique personality, so there's no wrong way to do this. To stitch on the 5mm eyes, you'll need a long darner. This one is a size 007. Thread the darner with two strands of floss and not one end. Insert the darner into one of the eye holes at an angle and exit at the back of the head on the other side of the center seam. Then, insert the needle into the hole the thread came out of and pass it back through the eye hole. This action securely locks the knot in the head stuffing. Now, slip an eye onto the darning needle. Pass the needle to the back of the head again at the same angle. You don't have to exit the back of the head through the same hole you used on your first pass. But on your return pass to the front, make sure to use your exit hole. If you don't use the exit hole, a dimple will form on the back of the head. To securely attach the eyes, repeat this, making a second pass through the back of the eye and the head. Then knot off and hide your knot. When you go to trim the thread, pull slightly so its end will slip back below the surface. Now, repeat that process on the other eye at the opposite angle through the head. As you can see, I've added a little pin to mark my other exit hole so I can keep this eye at an equal but opposite angle. With the eyes attached, I can now adjust the black cheek line with fine permanent pen. The brush tip can also work here, but if you want more control, use a fine Prismacolor or Micron pen. For the eyebrows, I hairsprayed and ironed a small scrap of the peat moss colored felt, so it was stiff and squished wafer thin. <laughs> then I used the side head pieces as a reference to cut out the eyebrow shape. Play around with positioning until you're happy and then you can glue them to the head with some tacky glue. When you have the brows attached, set your iron to its high setting and give them some heat. This will dry the glue quickly and contour the brows to the curved surface of the head. I was hasty and got a bit of the pen on the surface of my iron, but it wiped off easily with a wet rag and minimal elbow grease. Okay, we are on the home stretch, my friends. Uh, so let's stitch the nose right now. 
Um, I've been scripting this whole thing, but I am just going to go free form here uh, right at the end because it is the last day of the month and I want to get this out to you tonight. Okay, so we're heading through the nose here. I've got two strands um, threaded on my needle and I'm going to try to pop this giant knot through. There it goes. Um, so stitching through the, um, the felt that has all that hairspray on it can be a little tricky. So you might need a, um, a little pair of pliers here. Um, so here we go. I'm going to go another pass here. And I'm just trying to make all the stitches about the same width. Uh, and I guess I'm going to probably do four or five rows. Let's see. We're just, uh, I'm just going to run this, run this all the way through here and, and chit chat through it. Okay, so one more pass, that's three. And I'm gonna tell you right now, one of my stitches is a little wide um, and it's sticking out a little bit, but I fix that in a minute. Okay, so this is four passes. Okay, and that's it. So four passes is what I did on the nose here. And I'm going to pop this knot through. I'm just going to go right back through the hole I exited from and pop it back in and trim my thread. We didn't really hear the pop on this one. Oh, no, there it is. I'm pulling the thread a little bit so that the black thread will pop back under the surface. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, um, I know everybody has stitched noses and mouths before who has made, who, excuse me, who have made my kits. But on this one, since we're using the little micron pen, oh, there I go. So here it goes. I'm fixing my little nose because I had a stitch that was out of place. It looks like the, um, the black above the nose could be evened out a little too. Okay, yeah, so I'm making the vertical line of the mouth here and I'm just using a 005 a micron pen. Um, so something, you know, something kind of small and fine, and I'm just drawing it in here. You can also stitch it if you know how to do that, but since we're using the Micron pens and the Prismacolor pens here, um, I'm just going to go right ahead and, um, and use my pen. I'm even going to use it to make the little whisker marks. On my initial sample, all these things were stitched, but there's no reason why you can't also use your little micron pen because it looks just as good. All right, that looks pretty good. Look at them together. Not too shabby. Okay. I think I'm just going to darken it in a little bit here to make his mouth a little more prominent. Okay, so now we're going to get these ears situated. So you might want to, you know, play around with where they go and move them. You know, dogs move their ears all over the place. And so um, there are a lot of, a lot of places that, um, that you could attach the ears. Oops, I got a little fuzzle there. So I'm just pinning them in place. And um, I like to do this little fold in the back. Let's see, there it is. Finally doing it doing voiceover over the video I made, so can't quite keep up with myself. Okay, so I've got a little, um, kind of made a little corner there in the back, I'm gonna pin it in, and pin the other corner of the ear in. Getting caught on my, uh, on my pipe cleaner in there. So if we look at these together, you can see my first sample has these sort of, you know, bendy kind of cute little floppy ears. Um, I did that all with, um, 
with the um, hairspray. So I kind of put pins in them to hold these different folds and then hairsprayed it after I was done. And so that's how I achieved that. So we'll just get the second ear on here. We'll try to match it up with the first. Do that little fold in the back again to get the corner. get it all pinned in place. So you can see when I bend them down like this um, how they're going to have that floppy effect. But anyway, after they're all attached and you've done all your final markings on the head, then you can um, put a, little, a few little pins in there to hold those folds and then hairspray it and let it dry. Let's get them stitched on though here. I'm gonna use a single strand of thread knotted at one end. And we're gonna do another version of a whip stitch here. This is, this is like um, sort of an edge to a three-dimensional surface version of the whip stitch. And again, because we've got that hairspray on the head, uh, it's gonna be a little tricky, you know, not tricky, but it's gonna to be tougher to get the needle through. So I've got my pliers handy. just going to start and bury that bury that starting knot. See, I definitely need the pliers. Pop the knot through. And um, so as I'm doing this, I keep getting my thread caught on the arms and the tail and the legs and everything. So if you want to like wrap a little saran wrap or something like that around the body, um, you won't get caught on as much. So basically, to do this kind of whip stitch, you are, um, I'm coming back through the ear right now. But with every pass, I go in this direction, I'm catching the ear itself. The first couple stitches are a little bit, uh, you know, takes a little finesse to get them going. And then on the pass back in this direction, I'm catching the head every time, just the surface. You don't need to go crazy here. And then back through the ear and back through the head again. And then you're just gonna continue all the way along the ear, taking out the pins as you go, and, um, and then you'll knot off and hide your knot at the end. So at this point, I'm just gonna do a little, uh, do a little fast forwardy to get us through that and, um, and on to the next thing. Okay, so zip zip, we are just whizzing through our whip stitch of the ear here. And I'm taking my pins out as I go. A little plier action for the tricky bits. Right toe. Boy, I wish I could sew that fast. All right, see there, I'm all caught up on the body. What a nuisance. Okay, um, there we go. That's the last pin. And then we're just going to do one more stitch here, I think, and then we'll knot off the thread and hide our knot again. All right. Okay, we just stick that needle back in the exit hole and pop our knot through. So as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of black on my fingers. That's because I'm, I'm sort of working through this and, and I haven't let it dry all the way, all the way um, as I've been working. So um, just as, as you do yours, um, definitely give the, um, the pen a good, good chance to dry between steps. So at this point, I'm just going to use my handy pen again and color in that transition from the ear to the head so it's nice and smooth. Okay, 
And then I don't know actually if miniature pinchers have this little part of black on the insides of their ears, but I decided it was cute. So this was, um, this was my solution to that transition on the inside of the ear too, like just give it a little shadow. So I've got a couple of my little pins here and I'm just gonna fool around for a second and sneak them in this way and that and see what I like. Can't decide, maybe that's not the way I want it. We'll get another one to get the floppy bit folded down. So something like that. And then you're just gonna give it a little spritzy spritzy with your hairspray and let it dry. I'm not gonna do that here, but I'm just kinda showing you what's happening. Um, and then after that's dry, you can take those pins out and then you can fool around with the ear a little bit more and make fine adjustments and give it another spritz if you need to as well. All right, so on the legs here, um, I hadn't done any of that coloring, so I'm going to do I'm going to do a bit of that, and I'm going to zip right through it with fast forward here. All right, so I'm working on the uh, the raw felt. I haven't done um, any of the hairspray on the legs or arms, or on the belly area because I want those to um, not you know kind of pucker and buckle when you move them around. So I'm just doing all of my markings right on the felt. So it behaves a little differently. You know, you get a fuzzier surface. Um, it's a little slower. The ink doesn't absorb uh, quite as well. You have to give it a little more, little more attention um, than we did on the head. But just go ahead and kind of color in the outer, outer legs like that. And then same thing on the arms. Just kind of figure out what length you want the leg, uh, the leg coloring to come down to. Zip, zip, and then we do a little bit of that rolling action to get the color a little deeper. And then they have these, um, am I even doing it here? There it is, there it is. There's kind of this little point at the end of their arms. Um, so you can add that in too. Okay, so I apologize for the super kind of wrapped up ending here but it is the last day of the month and it's friday night and i want to get this video out to you guys tonight okay i hope you guys have a great weekend and um, i'll see you soon take care bye